A lot of people ask me what is the best beetle for a beginner to start with a beetle breeding project and for me the answer is clear this is for me Macunorina polyphemus. There are several reasons why this nice beetle is a, a good animal to start with because first they are nice and shiny and they are not small, in fact they are pretty big beetles as you can see here under this lens. This is a nice and beautiful beetle, probably a bit, so you can see it's a female here under this camera. She's looking into the sun that's shining on her head and she's a little bit nervous because she has no male at the moment. As you can see the color on the on the elytras is very shiny and kind of holographic so it's very nice shimmering between orange and green and what she likes, she likes of course an apple and now I have this female in a little box where I want to prepare them for mating because if you have a small terrarium and where you can put the male and the female together that's the best for uh, let's say for 10 days or two, 2 weeks to leave them there until you are sure that the female and the male they have mated and then you can take out the female and bring her into a bigger box where she can lay eggs and the bigger box that can mean something from a 5 liter box like this but that would be the smallest up to a let's say 22 liter box like this one filled not completely to the top but I would say four fifths of the box would be filled with a substrate containing leaf material rotten leaves and compost and then you can just leave the female in here with some beetle jellies and fruits on the top and wait um, either you wait till the female is dead or you check around two or three months later whether you find some larvae in the box do not remove, uh, try to remove eggs, that's a complicated thing for beginners. So just put the female with the male in the box and wait for three months or, or more. Or until, until you can see the larvae from outside, that's a possibility because sometimes uh, you see them from outside. So what we do, we have this uh, female here, I have some more females, there's another one in here. But uh, they dig down into the substrate when they are disturbed and only the males they show um, on, the, on the surface here is another female let me try to make another picture of her so kind of another other light here now she's a pretty green greenish on the on the elytras here but it's also a nice uh, a nice beetle and I know children like this kind of beat because it's, it looks uh, friendly, it has no aggressive forms, it's just a nice beetle uh, to have on your hand and to care for. It's not doing you any harm, so you can keep it on your hand and just uh, and look and care for the beetle until the female has laid some eggs and or yeah, and then you can go on with the breeding process. And now here I want to show you something because I'm breeding this beetle already a long time and here I have some that seem to be already out of their pupil cells because the larva, when she is developed to the end, she will create a pupil chamber where the larva can uh, have the final mold for the pupa. And I think you can, if you have a look here, this point here, this is the place where the larva has pupated and I think already, it should be already a beetle in here also, in this case here I think there's a beetle there. And we, also here you can see very clearly the beetle, you can see him from outside waiting inside of this pupil uh, cell that looks oval shaped here. And now I, I will hope that we find a male throw for these females that we have. Let's see whether we find them here. 
So that's a nice thing because here we can have a look from outside into the pupil uh, chamber. Look this here. This a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, beetle in there. And if we open it very carefully, you can see that this beetle has emerged from the pupil skin already. And we will find out whether it's a male or a female. But I would guess it's a male. Why? Because it has this very, very nice uh, satiny uh, finish on the elytros. And the females, normally they are glossy white. So that must be a male. So it's very, very freshly emerged. So it hardly moves here around. So like that. You can see him move around. It's beautifully colored as you can see here. It is a it is a Mequinorina polyphemus. On the head there's still some uh, rests of the pupil skin. I will try to, to remove them later but as you see from the colors this is very nice with these brownish uh, stripes on the elytros and this green, yellow, orange stripes on the pronotum. So let's see whether we can remove the final part here so that we can see that's a male. Because then we see that it has a little, these little horns here. So you can see it here. There has, there has three horns. One on each side and one on, on the front with a kind of a, a fork. It's not completely finished. So I think we leave this one in his uh, own box for a while before we put it together with the females so then it can develop uh, to the final nice people and I already put a beetle jelly in here because if he's hungry or thirsty he can have a little drink and eat now what we see here is this is the typical form of a of a pupil chamber of practically all the rose chambers. They are mostly oval shaped like this, and the pupa is has not a lot of space inside. And here you can see there's a little hole with some rest of the pupil skin. So I think that's um, it's good to open this now. Because if you see the rest of the pupil skin, you know that it's the, the beetle is already out of this, uh, of this pupil skin. So let's open it very, very carefully so that we, I think I open it here on the top. And then we see what we find in there. Whoa, you see? It's a freshly emerged beetle. So what? Do you think is it is it a female or a male? If you look at this part of the elytros, what would you guess? Yes, it's a male because it's a satiny on this. So we have tried to take him out here of this chamber. That wouldn't harm them. Oh, this is a very nice brother. Look at him. Look at him. Isn't it a nice beetle with these prominent horns on the on the front? Three horns, you know this is at, you see these three horns, that's a different to Mechinorina Torquata that polyphemus, the polyphem beetle has these three horns uh, on the front of his face and you see his eyes here. And this is a, really a beetle children enjoy having it and playing with it and caring uh, for it. So this seems pretty good in development already. So I put him to one of the females that I have here. We have seen this one before, so I put it into uh, this uh, little terrarium with, together with the other um, polyphem beetle. So now here it is. Now here they are waiting for the first rendezvous here in this mating box and as I said in two weeks I will take them out 
and separate the female from the male so that the female can lay her eggs uh, without being disturbed all the time uh, from the male. But let's go on. We have more here to, to see. Also this one um, is a purple cell. And also this one, which I think we can already open because you already see the shine of the colors coming through. And also this one, what you guess it is? Yes, of course, it's a, it's a nice male here of Macrinorino Bolivemo. These are not big beetles, because big means if they get over 60 millimeters or so, then you can say that's a big beetle. This one we put into this cage. There's another female somewhere here, but I don't stick her out now. So we have only the second pair, and we have still some more of these boxes that we can check, because this is a nice thing to see whether they have already uh, emerged from their pupil skin, and when we can when we take them out for breeding. Oh, I forgot to open that. So that's so. Also here you see that's the egg, and already here you see something is looking out of this hole. And if you have a good eye, you can already see that it's probably a male. So let's see. Yeah, it's also a male. That's very nice. Look, I try to open it under this line so that you can. Also, here you see some parts of the purple skin on the beetle, and if you remove it, you see underneath this very nice satiny color of this very nice. Oops, <laughs> now he's hanging on my hand here. He's already pretty active. Also, if you look from underneath, it's everything is mechanical here uh, because. Uh, Beetles, they have a, a hard shell of an exoskeleton with chitin. It's kind of like a car with the, with the, so let's see whether I can stop him here and watch it, look at him a bit closer. Very nice one also. We have a third female that we can present it to this male here. I have a box here. Look, that's the female. Let's see whether we can arrange a little marriage here under this lens. That's the ones. One is the female here. This one with the shiny, with the shiny elytras and finish on the top, and the other one is the male. So nice people, aren't they? And this I would suggest if you really want to start with the beetle breeding project, start with Macrimolina polyphemus. They are nice beetles and they are easy to keep. And as you see now, we start with putting them both into their bridal room. <laughs> yeah, they go, yeah, they go for honeymoon now here in this box for around, uh, let's say, two weeks. And then i show you what we can do with them. So I think this will be kind of a first part of uh, breeding instruction for beginners. Why do I uh, not uh, say that you should start with smaller ones? Because of course you can start with all these Pochnoto, uh, Rolchev that are very easy to breed too. But I think that uh, children like if the, if the beetles are big and if you can look at them and look them in the eye so that you, it's easier to make contact to this um, special form of life called uh, beetle and if they are too small it's it's a bit more difficult to come into a contact eye to eye but with this beetle you can do that and you will have a lot of fun and you will have some very interesting uh, moments watching them breed and live uh, together with you thanks for watching